Hello, it's your professor Christina Knudsen. In previous videos, you learned how to build a null distribution and how to calculate a p-value for your um, test statistic. And now we are going to talk about like why you would expect to see a small p-value in some situations. So we'll be building our intuition. Let's imagine that we have two means and these means are pretty different like very, very different. We would expect to see a small p-value. So this video is about why we would expect that. So to look at an example, let's imagine that we have two groups of student, students, those who live on campus and those who live off campus. Students who live on campus and off campus seem to study a different amount every week. And so we're wondering, is there a difference in their two means? Our null hypothesis would be that they study an equal amount on average every week, and then our alternative hypothesis would be that they study a different amount on average every week. So we can write our hypotheses like this. The null hypothesis would be the two means are equal, and the alternative would be the two means are not equal. Alternatively, we could write our um, null and alternative hypotheses as follows. We could write them as mu on campus minus mu off campus is equal to zero. And then our alternative would be mu on campus mu minus mu off campus is not equal to zero. Okay, so you go out and you collect a bunch of data and find that the sample average, the sample mean for the students who live on campus is 40 hours per week and the mean um, for the students who live off campus is five hours a week. Then we know that we can just take the difference between these two means to calculate our test statistic for our original data set. And so five, 40 minus 5 would just leave us a test statistic of 35. Now we know that we need to go and calculate a null distribution to compare this number 35 against. So we need to think about if the null hypothesis were truly correct, in other words, if the two means are truly equal, what kind of test statistics would we see? And um, from examples that we've done so far in class, then we've seen that we have some kind of null distribution that looks usually a little bit bell-shaped like this. And it'll be centered at zero because zero is the value of mu on minus mu off under the null hypothesis. All right, now let's go and compare our original test statistic of 35. So let's draw 35 in pink, and maybe it's over here. We know to calculate our p-value that we need to count up how many test statistics are as extreme or more extreme than 35. So in other words, we need to count the number of test statistics in this upper tail here. So our p-value would be equal to two times the following fraction in the denominator we would have the number of simulated test statistics greater than or equal to our original test statistic plus one and we need to add in one for this original test statistic right here and then the denominator is m plus one where m is the number of um, simulated test statistics that we've calculated up okay so if we have two means that are pretty different then that would cause our test statistic to be pushed further away from zero, maybe in the upward direction, maybe in the downward direction. In this particular example, our test statistic is being pushed up in the upward direction. Then we would count up the number of test statistics in this um, smaller tail here. And so we can see that when we have a really extreme difference in means, such as 35, then that will make a small tail here, and that will cause our p-value to be small. And if we make this even more extreme, so let's redraw this, and I'm going to zoom it out a bit. Okay. So here's our null distribution. Here is 35. And then let's 
consider an even more extreme difference, like 100. So in other words, one group studies maybe 105 hours per week, while the other group studies only five hours a week. Going and increasing the difference, in other words, pushing these two means apart, drives up our test statistic. And that then makes the tail here smaller. And so then the number of test statistics that are, the number of simulated test statistics that are greater than or equal to our original test statistic shrinks. And that causes our p-value to decrease. So saying that again, as our two groups become more and more different, then their sample means spread apart from each other. That causes our test statistic to be driven away from zero. So it could be upward in this direction or it could be downward in that direction. And that makes the tail in the more extreme direction smaller and smaller which makes the number of simulated test statistics that are as extreme or more extreme compared to the original test statistic smaller and smaller, and that causes our p-value to decrease. So when we have two groups that are really different from each other, we would expect to have a small p-value. If we have two groups that are really similar to each other, then we would expect to see a relatively large p-value. So let's look at an example like that. Okay, so in this next example, X bar for the on-campus group is 15, while X bar for the off-campus group is 15.1 hours. So in other words, we can see that these two sample means are very, very similar to each other. Then we go off, calculate our null distribution, which is centered at zero, and our um, test statistic would be X bar on minus X bar off. So 15 minus 15.1. So maybe about here, negative 0.1. And then we go and find the smaller tail and find the number of test statistics as extreme or more extreme. So now we're looking for the number of simulated test statistics that are less than or equal to Our original test statistic which is negative 0.1. So we go count these up, add in our 1 for our original test statistic, and then divide by the number of simulated test statistics plus 1, and that would give us our p-value. And so we can see that when we have two means that are very similar to each other, they're very close to each other, then we get a pretty large p-value. So this is going to be like almost m over 2, almost half of our simulated test statistics. And so for something like this, we would see a, we would expect a p-value of maybe almost 1. So when we have two means that are very, very close to each other, then we would expect a large p-value, and that would make us then want to not reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. And if we have two groups that are very different from each other, they have two very different means, then that will make us have a very small p-value, and that will lead us to want to reject the null hypothesis.